Did you know the word spiritualism only came to be used in the sense of trying to communicate with the dead in the year 1853? Now, the reason that's interesting is because early SDAs were objecting to spiritualism before the year 1853, which raises the question, what was the spiritualism that they were objecting to? Now, the answer will likely surprise you. The first instance on record of the word spiritualism being used in the English language is in the year 1796. Okay, and at that time, as we can see uh, from Edom Online in the part I have underlined in the blue, it held the meaning of advocacy of a spiritual view, doctrine of the existence of spirit as distinct from matter or as the only reality. Okay, and, and then it says in parentheses, opposed to materialism. Now, since today, most people automatically think that the word materialism refers to, you know, a desire to gain a lot of material goods, um, greediness and that sort of thing. I'd like to draw your attention to the entry down below there. So just follow the red arrow to the entry for materialism. And you'll see that the word materialism was first recorded as being used in the English language in 1748. And it meant philosophy that nothing exists except matter. Okay. So it didn't convey um, the idea of wanting material goods until very late in the 1800s. So at the time we're talking about uh, the year before, the time before the year 1853, it's not that spiritualism was opposed to greediness for material goods. It's opposed to the philosophy that nothing exists except matter. Okay. So when we're reading the writings of early SDAs, it's really important to know what their words meant at the time they were being used. If you were to take a more modern definition of a word and read that into what someone wrote um, from before the time when the word even held that more modern meaning, well, you just you, you just wouldn't rightly understand what they were saying. You know, you wouldn't rightly understand the author, right? So this is a perfect example with spiritualism. The word spiritualism wasn't even being used to refer to the idea that the dead try to communicate with the living until the year 1853. So if you were to read the word spiritualism in something written prior to 1853, it would be incorrect to assume that this is what it meant. Um, not that the belief didn't exist prior to 1853. It just wasn't referred to by the word spiritualism. Okay. Now, something else that's important to take notice of is that there are two main categories of a spiritual view. Okay. One category is that there are two fundamental substances that exist, matter and spirit. Okay. And spirit in this view is said to be distinct from matter. In other words, it's not matter. Now, this view is commonly referred to as substance dualism, right? The belief that there are two types of substances that exist, matter and non-matter or immateriality, okay? Now, the other category of a spiritual view that's mentioned here is that there is only one fundamental substance that exists, that being spirit, okay? And again, spirit here means um, not matter, you know, a, not material, okay? It's supposed to be immaterial. Uh, that's just the word, what the word means. Immaterial means not material. So this view says all reality is immaterial. That's the second category under a spiritual view. So these forms are two main forms of the belief that is spiritualism. Okay. Now, this earlier sense of the word that you see underlined in the blue, it continued on after the year 1853. It's not like it stopped conveying the meaning of, um, you know, advocacy of a spiritual view about immateriality or spirit as opposed for matter. It's not that that meaning dropped out of existence. Um, in fact, it's still used that way today in philosophy. The important thing to take note of from here is that prior to 1853, the word spiritualism specifically referred to the belief system called a spiritual view, 
which is the idea that non-material reality exists. Okay, now here's the British Cyclopedia from the year 1836, okay? Uh, prior to the time when the word spiritualism came to include the meaning of the dead trying to contact the living, right? And notice what it says. I've got it highlighted there in the yellow. Notice what it says for the entry of spiritualism. Spiritualism is opposed to materialism and therefore may be called immaterialism. The system of Descartes had the character of spiritualism. Okay, now if you're familiar with the philosophy of Descartes, you already know that he wasn't focused on um, the idea of the dead being in contact with the living, okay? He's known for Cartesian dualism, which is his own formulation of substance dualism. Descartes believed that thought or consciousness exists independent of matter, okay, and is thus immaterial. So his belief system had the distinctive characteristic of spiritualism. That's what we see here in the British Cyclopedia, right? So again, just to make this as clear as possible, what the term spiritualism meant prior to 1853 is any belief in the existence of non-physicality, okay? Spirit in this usage means non-physicality and ism is just the belief uh, or practice, okay? So spiritualism in its most basic meaning refers to belief in spirit, belief in non-physicality, okay? So as I mentioned, uh, early SDAs rejected spiritualism even prior to 1853. And hopefully you can see why this is surprising and significant. Okay, now let's take a look at a few statements by early SDAs, James and Ellen White in particular. We're going to just look at some of their statements. And um, there'll be statements made prior to 1853 in which they rejected spiritualism. And it'll be evident that this earlier meaning of the word spiritualism is what they had in mind. Okay, so we'll start with this article by James White. Uh, you can find it. it. It's available as a uh, pamphlet also or individual tract, but this is taken from a printing in 1851 in the Review and Herald under the title, The Parable, Matthew 25, 1 through 12. Okay. Now look over to your right there at that piece of the, the article, the first full paragraph. He says, it is said that the view that Adventists have fulfilled the parable of Matthew 25, 1 through 12 leads to spiritualism. This may be true, but take notice, this is not our position. The coming of the bridegroom is in the history of the marriage. Our position is that a change has taken place in the position and work of our literal high priest in the literal sanctuary in heaven, which is to be compared to the coming of the bridegroom in the marriage. This view is a perfect safeguard against spiritualism. We not only believe in a literal Jesus who is a minister of the sanctuary, but we also believe that the sanctuary is literal. Okay. Now, so far, it's probably pretty easy to see that, you know, this is completely outside of the discussion of anything to do with the state of the dead. This is just talking about whether or not Adventists or Millerites um, had fulfilled the parable of Matthew 25. And that's the topic of discussion. And in that uh, subject, he brings in the word spiritualism and says, you know, this one view is spiritualism, but that's not our position. Our position is this other view. And it's, you know, perfect safeguard against spiritualism. So obviously it has nothing to do with the state of the dead. Now, if you drop down to the bottom where I have uh, more highlighted in yellow, notice he says there, if we take the liberty to say there is not a literal ark containing the Ten Commandments in heaven, we may go only a step further and deny the literal city and the literal Son of God. Certainly, Adventists should not choose the spiritual view rather than the one we have presented. We see no middle ground to be taken. So there, in just the same paragraph, he's using the words, the spiritual view, in parallel 
with the word spiritualism, just like what we saw in Adam Online, where it says that spiritualism is a spiritual view, et cetera, et cetera, right? So he's using spiritualism to refer to a spiritual view, not whether or not the dead are in contact with the living or that sort of thing. All right. Now in this article, this is also going to be from James White, and this is a letter that he wrote to the editor of the Day Star, and this is printed in January of 1846. So I'm just going to blow up that heading a little bit. And so there now it's easier to see that uh, in the top left with the red circle, Enoch or E. Jacobs, E stands for Enoch. Enoch Jacobs was the editor and publisher. And this is January 1846. So in a letter that James White wrote to Enoch Jacobs, we're going to be looking at two of his statements wherein he refers to spiritualism and uh, see what was it he was referring to. So I'm just going to blow those two parts up. And now it's going to be a lot easier to see there. So at the top, he says, this class can be no other than those who spiritualize away the existence of the father and son as two distinct, literal, tangible persons. Also a literal holy city and throne of David. Then further on in the letter toward the end, he's talking about how um, the scriptures portray the father and the son as having, you know, bodies, head, hair, they wear clothes, all of that. He points to uh, Daniel 7, uh, the Ancient of Days, and he says, the Ancient of Days, or God, has a head and hair on his head and a body, etc. And then he says, as David saw him clad with a snow white garment. But that's that's just a typo. He's quoting from Daniel. He's, he's a, referring to Daniel. So he, he wrote David or Enoch Jacobs wrote it, you know, included it wrong when he had it printed. Whoever made the mistake, it should say Daniel. But anyway, um, then he's pointing to the fact that, you know, Paul describes uh, Jesus as being the express image of the father's person. Okay. And he's just making the point that God is a person for man made uh, he made man in his own image and is all about the physicality of the father and the son and that um, describing them as not being distinct, tangible persons is spiritualizing them away. Right now, look at the very end of the portion at the bottom. He says, this is the faith once delivered to the saints and will live in spite of modern spiritualism. And for this, we are to earnestly contend. So here again, we see James White using spiritualism and the term spiritualizing away, not to refer to anything to do with the state of the dead or whether the dead can communicate with the living. He's talking about views of God and Jesus that make them out to be not tangible persons. And he says, this is spiritualism. This spiritualizes their existence away. All right. So now we're going to look at a statement from Ellen White. And this is printed in 1851 in her little booklet called A Sketch of the Christian Experience and Views of Ellen G. White. And we're going to be looking at uh, the part printed on page 64. So let's blow that up a little bit bigger. Now we'll start up at the top there where it says, I have frequently been. Okay. She says, I have frequently been falsely charged with teaching views peculiar to spiritualism. So distinctive to spiritualism. She says, but before the editor of the Day Star run into that delusion, the Lord gave me a view of the sad and desolating effects that would be produced upon the flock by him and others in teaching the spiritual views. Okay, and we'll read more in just a moment, but let's just let that sink in. So we just saw that letter from James White where he was writing to the editor of the Daystar, Enoch Jacobs. And the spiritual view that Enoch Jacobs had come to adopt and and really in that issue, the same issue that we just looked at where James White's letter was included, that issue is the first issue where Enoch Jacobs 
fully expresses his newfound spiritual view. The issue prior to that, um, I forget what the date of that issue was, maybe January 7 or 14. But anyway, um, in that issue, he announced that he had recently adopted the spiritual view and that in the next issue, he would fully explain himself more. And that happens to be when uh, James White's letter was also included in that printing. So when you read what Enoch Jacobs wrote about his new beliefs, it's all about how um, he believes that Jesus had returned on October 22, 1844, as Adventists had been expecting, but they just were wrong in expecting Jesus to come back physically. Um, that actually Jesus came back non-physically. He came back spiritually. Okay. And that even um, the Holy City was now all around us in a spiritual or non-physical sense. And these were just, you know, it's just a tiny summary of his views that he had come to adopt. And Ellen White, here she says that before he fell into that delusion, that being pointing back to spiritualism, the Lord gave her a view of the sad and desolating effects that would be produced upon the flock by him and others in teaching the spiritual views. So clearly she's referring to spiritualism and the spiritual views as synonymous. And she's saying that what Enoch Jacobs had come to believe is spiritualism. And he wasn't talking about the state of the dead or anything like that. He was talking about that Jesus returned in a non-physical sense and that he was literally now inhabiting the bodies of the saints who had been expecting his return. So after she says, you know, before the editor of the day star, um, came to believe that delusion, God has shown her all these other things, right? And then she says, they're in the, the green where it says, I have often seen. She says, I have often seen the lovely Jesus that he is a person. And she, you know, she's got the word person italicized there. So she's stressing that to indicate that this is in contrast to spiritualism and the spiritual views. So again, not to do with the state of the dead, right? It has to do with uh, Jesus person. She says, I asked him, she asked Jesus if his father was a person and had a form like himself, said Jesus. I am in the express image of my father's person. Okay. And person is all in uppercase. She's really stressing these words like image and person, right? In contrast with spiritualism, she's like the editor of the day star, fell into spiritualism. But in contrast to that, God has shown me that, you know, Jesus and his father are persons with a form. So then she goes on, she says, I have often seen that the spiritual view took away all the glory of heaven and that in many minds, the throne of David and the lovely person of Jesus had been burned up in the fire of spiritualism. So here again, um, this doesn't have anything to do with whether the dead are trying to contact the living or can contact the living or anything like that. It's all about whether or not Jesus is physical or non-physical. And even heaven, is heaven a real place? Is it a physical, tangible place? Um, and she says that the views that she's referring to as spiritualism virtually burn up those things. It destroys them or eradicates them um, to where they actually just no longer exist, right? She goes on to say, I have seen that some who have been deceived and led into this error would be brought out into the light of truth, but it would be almost impossible for them to get entirely rid of the deceptive power of spiritualism. Now, that's a really important statement and one that we're not going to spend a lot of time on in this video, but I would like to just bring it to your attention so that you can spend more time contemplating that, praying on that, asking God to show you the full truth of this statement and the implications of it and if and how it might apply to each person each one of you as an individual. Um, we all have to ask those sorts of questions about ourselves, right? Otherwise, this is all just in theory. So let's put that really into practice and see, okay, here's a really serious statement from Ellen White. 
Some who have been deceived and led into this error would be brought out into the light of truth, but it would be almost impossible for them to get entirely rid of the deceptive power of spiritualism. And she concludes that paragraph by saying such should make thorough work in confessing their errors and leaving them forever. Okay. So clearly we can see here that what Ellen White is objecting to when she's objecting to spiritualism and the spiritual view is the view that Enoch Jacobs was holding, right? The view that he came to hold in regard to the non-physical return of Jesus, that he had returned in a spiritual or non-physical immaterial sense. Okay, now bringing this statement in from James White to look at these side by side, I just thought it might be powerful to see these two things side by side and see how similar they really are. Um, they're stressing the same things here. They're stressing in particular the words image and person in their attempt to counter spiritualism. And they're both referring to the idea that um, to say that the father and the son don't have tangible bodies, you know, head and hair and all that, as James White points out from Daniel and Hebrews 1, is to basically just destroy their very existence. It spiritualizes them away. Um, now, we can see here that when they're referring to spiritualism, very obviously, they're using the same sense of the word that we saw earlier in this video, where um, it has to do with promoting the idea that immateriality or non-physicality exists, right? Either of those views are under the broad umbrella of spiritualism. They are both spiritualism. Spiritualism is any belief in immateriality, period. Now, hopefully you're grasping how important this is and the fuller implications. Belief in immateriality is spiritualism. That's literally the definition of the word. And that's how James and Ellen White were using the word spiritualism prior to 1853, the year when the word spiritualism first came to include the meaning of what we commonly, as SDAs especially, think of or commonly comes to our minds when we think of the word spiritualism. Most people only think of the idea of the state of the dead, the idea that the dead are conscious, but it's important to not overlook the fact that spiritualism is more broad than that. And this is a very, very big deal. Spiritualism is any belief in immateriality. So if there's any belief in immateriality that has either crept into your way of thinking or that you've been taught even as an SDA, I hope that you'll look at these pieces of evidence further, really prayerfully consider it. And if you can see the truth that spiritualism is any belief in immateriality, please don't hesitate to just side with the truth and to share this truth with others. So thank you very much for joining us. And I hope that you're very, very blessed.